Let's examine the end behavior of polynomial functions. We'll start with the odd, odd degree polynomials. So before we fill in this page, I'm going to have you look back to some odd degree polynomials that we have already studied. For example, something simple like maybe y equals x, or it could be y equals x plus 2, for example. Remember, these are just lines. If this were y equals x plus 2, we know that my y-intercept would be 2, and my slope would be positive, positive 1. So I could roughly graph that, and that would be this line. And another odd degree polynomial that we've studied would be y equals x cubed, for example. And we know that is an S-shaped curve, something like this, roughly sketched. But you'll notice that the end behavior for both of these polynomial functions is the same. The ends are pointing in opposite directions. My first polynomial function here was a degree 1. It was a linear function, and the second one was degree 3. So these odd degree polynomial functions are going to have the ends of the graph point in opposite directions. Now, if I had switched the leading coefficient, instead of a positive 1 on the, the line y equals x plus 2, but if I switch it, say, to a negative 1, so now I would have y equals negative x plus 2, we know that it would still have a y-intercept of positive 2, but now the slope would be negative 1. So again, notice that the ends of the graph still point in opposite directions, but now the graph starts out pointing up and ends up pointing down. And so it's this, uh, these patterns that we're wanting to kind of capture on this page in, in a summary document. So when we have odd degree polynomials, we know that the ends are going to be pointing in opposite directions. Now if it's a positive leading coefficient, then we know that the graph will start out pointing down and it's going to end up pointing up. Now the middle here, we're not sure what this might this is going to look like. It could be just a straight line, it could be x to the first power, or it could be some type of a curve. So that's why I'm going to just draw this in as kind of a dotted curve, indicating that I'm not sure what's happening in the middle, but I know that the ends are going to look this way. Whereas if the leading coefficient is negative, we know the graph will start out pointing up, but then end pointing down. And once again, I'm just going to make this kind of dotted in the middle, indicating that I'm not sure what the middle looks like, but I know for a fact the ends will look like this. So for the left behavior, we're looking at the left side of the graph. We can see that the left behavior is that the graph is falling. So in your kind of beginning algebra classes, you probably would just write the word falls here. However, I'm going to encourage you, instead of writing falls, to let's go ahead and use the more advanced notation here that my left behavior is saying as x goes to negative infinity, and we utilize the arrow notation for this, then my y values are also decreasing, so they're going to negative infinity as well. That would be the left behavior of our graph. Whereas the right behavior here, you see the graph is pointing up, that would be written as x approaches positive infinity my y values, or f of x, also approach positive infinity. So that's your end behavior written with the arrow notation. And then on my other graph here, with the negative leading coefficient, left behavior here, the left side of the graph is rising, so we would say as x approaches negative infinity, this time my y values, f of x, are approaching positive infinity because they are increasing indefinitely or rising, and then the right behavior of my graph would be as x approaches positive infinity, those y values are going down, in other words they're decreasing, so y is approaching negative infinity. Now let's take a look at the even, the even degree polynomials. And before filling out this summary sheet, again, let's think about some even degree polynomials that we've already studied. So for example, y equals x squared. We've looked at parabolas at great length. We know that y equals x squared, the parent function is just this parabola with a vertex at 0, 0 that opens up. But we've also looked at y equals x to the fourth, a higher, higher power, but still even. And you'll remember that that was also a U-shaped graph. It just kind of got a little flatter in here, closer to the origin. But it was also a U-shaped graph, and so it's important to notice that the ends of the graph are pointing in the same direction, 
the same direction? Well, that was because it was an even, an even degree polynomial. And if we had changed that leading coefficient to be negative, let's say y equals negative x squared, then that negative would have caused the reflection across the x-axis. But notice, the ends are still pointing in the same direction, it's just that they're both pointing down. So let's capture that in this summary document. So we're looking for even degree polynomials, so the ends are going to point in the same direction. If it has a positive leading coefficient, then we know that the ends are going to be pointing up and up. And once again, in the middle here, I'm just going to make this dotted to imply that I don't know exactly what happens inside, but I know that the ends of the graph definitely point up and up. Whereas if we have a negative leading coefficient, the ends of the graph are going to be pointing in the same direction and pointing down. And dotted in here, not sure what the middle looks like. So, written with our arrow notation, the left behavior would be as x is approaching negative infinity, meaning as we travel to the left on our graph. So for this example, you see that the arrow is pointing up, so my y values are increasing. So f of x is approaching positive infinity. Then the right behavior is as x approaches positive infinity, the y values also are continuing to go up. So f of x is also approaching positive infinity. And for the left behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, here my y values are, are pointing, or rather the graph is pointing down, but the y values are getting more and more negative, so the y values f of x are approaching negative infinity. And the right behavior, as x approaches positive infinity, here my y values are also decreasing. The graph's going down, pointing down, so f of x is approaching negative infinity as well.